Hello, in this lecture we will cover coupled inductors and mutual inductance. Coupled inductors or coupled coils are magnetic devices that consist of two or more multi-turn coils wound around a common core. For instance, here I have one coil with N1 windings and here I have another coil with N2 windings which are wound around the same magnetic core. A voltage applied to one coil V1 causes another voltage across the second coil. For instance, let's assume that the input voltage is V1 is equal to L1 times DI1 over DT for the first coil. And L1 is the self-inductance of this first coil. We will have the current I1 that causes a flux phi inside this magnetic core and this can be given with phi is equal to C1 times N1 times I1. Here C1 is a constant that depends on the material and geometry of this core and N1 is simply the number of windings around that core with the copper wire. The flux phi is contained within the magnetic core and the voltage across the first coil V1 can be given by V1 is equal to N1 times D phi over DT. And since I have here the expression for the phi, I can take the derivative and I end up with V1 is equal to C1 times N1 squared times DI1 over DT. Now, please remember the constituent relationship for an inductor is V1 is equal to L1 times DI1 over DT. And let's look at this relationship. In the case of self-inductance, therefore, we have the L1 is equal to C1 times N1 squared. So in other words, the self-inductance of an inductor depends on the geometry of the core, material properties, and also to the square of the windings. Voltage V2 at the same time at the terminals of the second coil is induced by the same magnetic uh, flux and V2 is equal to N2 times dP over dT and this is equal to Cm times N1 times N2 times dI1 over dT and this Cm times N1 times N2 can be shortened as M which is the mutual inductance. Cm here is a constant that depends on the magnetic properties of the core and the geometry of the core. And N2 here is the windings of the second core. The polarity of voltage V2 compared to the polarity of the voltage V1 depends on the way in which the coils are wrapped around the core. We might wrap them around uh, either uh, clockwise or in counterclockwise manner. And therefore, if they are both uh, wound the same way, we use a dot convention and then put the dots on the same polarity. If they are wound with opposite polarities in the opposite directions, then we just put the dots on the opposite polarities. For instance, in the second case, this is called the dot convention. What will be the voltage V1 and V2 across the coils for a coupled inductor? Obviously, we need to take into account the self-inductance of the coils and also the mutual inductance. And we also need to take into account uh, where the current enters to the coils. In other words, where the dots are according to the dot convention. And accordingly, when the dots are both on the positive polarity, we have V1 is equal to L1 times DI1 over DT plus M times DI2 over DT and V2 is equal to L2 times DI2 over DT plus M times DI1 over DT and if the dot convention has the dots in opposite polarities in that case we just have the same equations but we just change the sign for the mutual inductance and we write them as minuses and here we should make an important note Usage of coils is usually limited to non-DC applications because at DC coils behave as short circuits and we cannot uh, speak about the mutual inductance and coupled inductors. 
Coupled inductors are more complicated than the elements which we have studied before. But when we look at their circuit equations, we observe them the equations are linear. And therefore, these elements can be represented using the tools of a linear circuit theory. For instance, we can convert a coupled inductor circuit to a circuit with dependent sources such that we can then utilize all the circuit analysis methods which we have learned before. Here, we just represent the first uh, part of the circuit with an inductor and a dependent source, which depends on the current I2. And for the second part, we have an inductor L2 and in series to that another dependent source, this time where the current depends on the I1. To say the more correctly, the derivative of I1 with respect to the time. The inductances L1 and L2 and mutual inductance M each depend on the geometry of the core, material properties of the core, and the number of turns in each coil. Previously, we have seen L1 is equal to C1 times N1 squared. We have also seen that the voltage induced at the terminals of the second coil, V2, depends on N2 times dP over dT, which can be given as the mutual inductance times the dI1 over dT. Now, by combining 1 and 2, we can write L1 times L2 is equal to C1 times N1 squared times C2 times N2 squared. And this can be written simply as C1 times C2 times N1 times N2 squared. And this will be equal to the mutual inductance of the two coils divided by some constant K, which can be written as M squared over K squared. Here, K, which is also called the coupling coefficient, relates the Cm to C1 and C2 values. And k is equal to cm divided by square root of c1 times c2. We can also write the coupling coefficient as in terms of the self-inductance L1 and L2 and mutual inductance m as k is equal to m divided by square root of L1 times L2. We know the voltage across the terminals V1 and V2. We also know that the current I1 and I2 pass through them respectively. Therefore, we can calculate the instantaneous power absorbed by the inductors as P is equal to V1 times I1 plus V2 times I2. And from here, if I plug in instead of V1 and V2 these expressions here, I end up with P is equal to the instantaneous power P is equal to L1 times I1 times the I1 over dt plus or minus depending on the polarity m times the I1 times the I2 divided by dt plus L2 times I2 times the I2 over dt. And if we were to integrate this from minus infinity till t in order to find the energy stored in the inductors, we end up with the following expression. 1 over 2 L1 times I1 squared plus 1 over 2 L2 times I2 squared. This is so far equal to the energy stored in individual inductors. Plus, in addition to this, the energy stored due to the mutual inductance in the form of plus or minus, depending on the polarity, M times I1 times I2. So this is the energy stored in a coupled inductor. So the energy stored in a coupled inductor is given by this equation. And since coupled inductors are passive elements, the energy stored must be greater than or equal to zero at all times. The limiting quantity for M is obtained when we set V is equal to zero. And for the case in which one current enters the dotted terminal and the other current leaves the dotted terminal, we will have this relationship. 1 over 2 L1 times I1 squared plus 1 over 2 L2 times I2 squared minus M times I1 plus I2 is equal to 0. Now I will do a small trick. It will look like as if I am doing nothing, but it will be very useful. 
I will add and subtract the same term from this equation. And as you can see, at the instant when I do that trick, this left side, these first three terms will be a perfect square. And I will have two other terms left here, which both have the multiplier I1 times I2. Accordingly, I can write my equation like this. A square term, which must be always greater than or equal to zero. And another term, which is this. And as we know that I1 and I2 both should have the same sign, then square root of L1 times L2 should be greater than or equal to M to satisfy this equation. So, therefore, the coupling coefficient, which we have previously defined as k is equal to m divided by square root of L1 times I2, L2, for a passive coupled inductor, cannot be larger than 1, and therefore, the k, the coupling coefficient, is always between 0 and 1. What happens when we connect coupled inductors to a load? So on the left side, we have a source. On the right side, we had a load. And in between, we have a coupled inductor with self-inductance L1, self-inductance L2, and the mutual inductance M. And the coil connected to the source is called the primary coil, and the coil connected to the load is called the secondary coil. And circuit 1 is connected to the circuit 2 through the magnetic coupling of the transformer. And here the mesh equations become the KVL for this first mesh and the KVL for the second mesh. And for these uh, coupled inductors, I just utilize the phasor versions of the equations which I have uh, shown in a couple of slides earlier. Accordingly, the mesh equations are j omega l1 times i1 minus j omega m i2 is equal to v1 and minus j omega m times i1 plus j omega l2 plus z2 in parentheses multiplied by i2 is equal to zero if i solve these two equations for i1 i end up with this expression as you can see i2 is related to v1 and here I see the terms related to the load impedance and also a term which is related to the mutual inductance and self-inductance of the coils. Let's see what type of cases we have for this equation. So the coupling coefficient is given as k is equal to m divided by square root of L1 times L2. And there is a special case of the coupling coefficient when coupling coefficient is a 1 and therefore m is equal to square root of L1 times L2. In that case, when I go to the previous equation and plug in that number, one of the terms drop and the current I2 is equal to j omega m divided by j omega L1 times Z2 times the phasor V1 and which can be also written as j omega times square root of l1 times l2 divided by j omega l1 times z2 times v1 and if we just uh, cancel those terms we end up with i2 is equal to square root of l2 divided by square root of l1 times z2 all of this multiplied with y the v1 so basically the impedance which is seen from the perspective of the primary coil is scaled by square root of L1 divided by square root of L2 and this is an important result. The voltage across the impedance V2 is equal to Z2 times I2 which is equal to square root of L2 over L1 times V1. And let's recall L1 was equal to C1 times N1 squared and L2 was equal to C2 times N2 squared. And if the coils are wound symmetrically, C1 is equal to C2. And therefore, we have a special ratio of the turns ratio of a coupled inductor. And in this special case, the transformer, 
where n is equal to n2 over n1. And we can simply write v2 is equal to n times v1. So in other words, the ratio of the coil windings in an inducted with mutual inductance is equal to unity. And symmetric winding is equal to n. Now we need to find the voltage V2 in the circuit. V2 is uh, here. And I have a coupled inductor with mutual inductance to Henry. And the circuit has a sinusoidal input. Since I have a sinusoidal input, it would be the best to solve this circuit in the frequency domain using phasers and impedances. So I will use this uh, representation on the right side. And I will start solving this question by writing B1. B1 is equal to using the equations which I which we have learned for the coupled inductors J16 times I1 because I have here L1 is equal to J16 plus the mutual inductance term I write plus because the dots are both on the same side plus J8 times I2 and similarly I can write V2 is equal to J8 times I1, the mutual inductance term, plus J12 times I2. And after doing this, I will now go and write the KVL for the both loops. So for KVL for this loop uh, will be 8 times I1 plus uh, V1 is equal to 5 times 45 degrees. And for the second case, I have V2 is equal to 12 times I because they are a parallel branch and then I2 is passing through here. But wait, I2 is passing against the passive convention. Therefore, this should be minus 12i. After I do this, I will number these equations. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I will plug V1 into this equation. 1 into 3 and 2 into 4. And that, that way I will get rid of V1 and V2 and my only unknowns will be left as I1 and I2 and I will solve two equations with two unknowns. And equation 3 becomes 8 plus J16 times I1 plus J8 times I2 which is equal to 5 with an angle of 45 degrees. And similarly, equation 4 becomes J8 times I1 plus J12 plus 12 times I2 is equal to 0 degrees. From here, I can calculate I1 is equal to minus J12 plus 12 times I2 divided by J8. And I can take this expression and plug into this expression. And I will end up with an ugly expression, but I can still manage it. 1 plus J2 divided by J times minus J12 minus 12 times I2. Okay. Plus J8 times I2 is equal to 5 with an angle of 45 degrees. Now, if I use MATLAB to simplify this left side, I end up with minus 36 uh, plus 4J times I2 is equal to 5 with an angle of 45 degrees. From here, I get I2 is equal to 5 divide with an angle of 45 degrees divided by 36 point 22 with an angle of minus 173 degrees which is equal to 0 0.138 with an angle of 
218 degrees. So I found finally I2. Now I need to find V2. But in order to find V2, I will use this relationship. Previously, I have found V2 is equal to minus 12 times I2. And I2 is equal to 0 0.138 uh, with an angle of 218 degrees amperes. According to V2 is equal to minus 1.656 times with an angle of 218 degrees. And I can get rid of that minus sign by adding 180 or subtracting 180 from the angle. So I will just uh, subtract 180. So according to this will be 1.656 times with an angle of 38 degrees. And still this is a phaser. I can convert this to the time domain as 1.656 times cosine. I guess the frequency was 440 plus 38 degrees. And I found the solution of this question for the voltage at the output terminals of the second coupled uh, inductor coil. All right, we need to find the voltage across the right hand coil. This one, the V output, so when the input Vs is equal to 5.94 times cosine 3t plus 140 degrees. So according to Vs will be 5.94 with an angle of 140 degrees. Hmm, this looks kind of hard because the inductors are connected. But here you should remember that the current, the mesh current I is entering to both inductors from the side with no dot. So therefore we will use the plus version of the coupled inductor equations. So let us write the KVL for this mesh. 5 times I plus J12 plus uh, the mutual inductance J6 times I plus J15 plus J6 times I is equal to 5.94 with an angle of 140 degrees. Now let's collect these terms. 5 plus 18 plus 21, 39 J I is equal to 5.94 times 140 degrees. So this will be equal to 39 times 31 with an angle of 82.7 degrees times I and accordingly here I have 5.94 with an angle of 140 degrees I will calculate I as 5.94 divided by 39 31 times uh, 140 divided by 82.7 degrees according to this will be equal to 0 0.151 with an angle of 57.3 degrees but this is on the current i i need to find the v out v out will be equal to j15 plus j6 times i and this will be equal to J21 times uh, 0 0.151 times 57.3 degrees. And this will be equal to 21. J is 90 degrees times 90 degrees times 0 0.151 times 57.3 degrees. And this will be equal to if I am not wrong, 3.17 with an angle of 147.3 degrees. I found V out as a phaser and as I always do, I need to bring this back to time domain as 3.17 times cosine 3t plus 147.3 degrees. So this will be 
my steady state output of the right hand coil of my coupled inductor.